Hi, in this video, we are going to discuss the new option of salary notices. Salary notices can actually be um, found in two different areas in the application. One is within the new contract program. So if I go to processing, new contracts, you can see there's a new tab available called salary notices. The other area that you can find salary notices is within compensations. So if I go to an, employ an employee's compensation and I look at that compensation, you can see there's a new option called salary notice available. So these two options are what we're gonna be discuss discussing in this video. First, we're gonna focus on the option within new contract. So we're gonna go back to processing new contracts. And you can see here that once I have my all of my information within the new contract maintenance program, if I switch over to the salary notices tab, I now can create salary notices for any employee that's within that new contract maintenance option. Um, you'll see here various fields, um, the first being the output file name. So if I would like to change this to be more meaningful um, and maybe differentiate between um, you know, years of um, salary notices, maybe this is just for a select group, I can make this output file name um, you know, work for me. The statement date, what date do I want printed on the notices? So you can change the date by selecting the calendar icon and then selecting that specific date then from the calendar. You have the ability to sort the notices by employee name or employee number. The school year, so what school year um, are these notices for? Um, what date will be printed on the notices? In this case, I've entered 2023-2024. The contract start date. So this gives me the ability to filter and only select based on a contract start date. So you can, you know, think of, you know, you have all of your employees, um, new contracts entered in that new contract maintenance option. And I only want to generate notices for a select group of people. Um, so maybe my administrators, you know, they're gonna have, likely have a start date um, that's different from maybe my teachers. So again, the date that this is referring to is the compensation start date. So if I enter a date in that contract start date field, only those that have a compensation start date on or after the date that I enter in this field will be selected and those notices will be generated for that group of people. By leaving this blank, all start dates will be considered for you know generating notices. I also have the ability to select based on the appointment type. So maybe I only want to generate salary notices for my classified employees at this time, or maybe just my certified employees. Again, by not selecting an appointment type, all records will be considered. I have the ability then to select um, by specific employees. So maybe I just need to regenerate or I've only, you know, at this time, I only want to generate notices for a specific employee or a, just, you know, a few, I can begin entering that employee's name. 
select it from the drop down, and then I'm going to click the add option to add it to the grid below. So this moves um, that employee to the selected employees. And in this case, when I generate the notices, only a notice for Josh Arnold will be created. You also have the ability to include district information on the salary notices. Um, if you would like that information to be printed on the notice, I would want to check this box. That then brings up all of the district information that's contained in the organization area. So this information here is pulling directly from core organization. Okay, so it gives me the ability, I'm gonna go back to new contracts and back to that salary notice tab. Um, it gives me the ability then to double check that information, make any changes that might be necessary um, before the notices are actually printed. So I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna select again, my one employee. Now I'm ready to actually print the notice or notices, um, you know, if you're doing more than one. I have the ability down below to um, select a form. So as we're gonna talk about later, um, you do have the ability to customize a form um, that's gonna work best for your district. Maybe you want um, additional things printed on the form. You wanna add a, your school logo. Um, those are all things that are available. And again, we'll step you through customizing the form um, a little later. What controls though um, the form that's selected by default um, is actually within the salary notice configuration option. So there's a new option under system configuration called salary notice configuration. So this default salary notice form allows me to select then a default form that's gonna automatically be entered when I go to that salary notice option with a new contract. So you can see here, we've imported a couple custom salary notice forms um, in the report manager, and those are available um, in the drop down here, one called Wildcat Salary Notice, and then Sal Notice 2024. Again, we'll get into that um, a little later. So by selecting that Wildcat salary notice in the configuration option, I'm gonna click save. That then, when I go back to new contracts and I go to that salary notice tab, that is the form that's gonna appear by default. You do have the ability to you know, use the drop down and, and change that form. But if you know that that's the form you're always gonna use, you know why not make that be your default so you don't have to choose it from the drop down or maybe forget to select it and generate those notices incorrectly. Okay. All right. So one more time, I'm gonna add my employee to the grid. And now I'm ready to actually generate the notices. So I can generate the notices in PDF, print that PDF file off, and then distribute those, or I can have the ability to email the, the salary notices. I'm gonna first click on the Generate Salary Notice option, and you can see that I have this box unchecked, so the district information will not be included on the direct deposit form. So the direct deposit, or I'm sorry, not direct deposit form, the salary notice, um, excuse me. Um, that information will print to the right of the employee information. 
So you can see here in this area off to the right, it's currently blank. If I choose to check that box, so I do want the district information included on the notice, I click Generate Salary Notice. You can see that it will include the district information on that notification. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. Um, again, this is using the default um, direct deposit form. Um, we'll get into customizing it, changing it, making it work for your, you know, a, sp a specific district need um, a little later. When it comes to emailing the direct deposit notices, um, there is a little bit of setup that's involved to make sure that everything is connected and is gonna work correctly. And the first thing that we wanna make sure that's installed and set up is under system, modules. It's the email notification services. So this should be installed. And you can see here, if I hover over um, the dash, um, it's already installed. So otherwise we would see a plus sign there. And for most of you, this is already going to, to be installed um, due to the fact that you're already using this for direct deposit notices. So as long as this you know, module, module has been installed, that then provides the ability to see under processing new contracts, the salary notice tab. So if you don't see this salary notice tab here, chances are that module has not been installed. But there's a good chance that because you know, you're already using um, direct deposit, um, this would already have to be in place. So once that's in place, again, you'll see that salary notice tab in the new contract area. The next step is to verify that the email notification STMP host information has been correctly entered. So again, this is something that should already be in place due to direct deposits. But if you go to system configuration and you go to email configuration, something needs to be entered in this field here called SMTP host. It's probably in your case, a series of numbers. So, you know, as long as there's something entered there, um, you know, that's already again, probably been set up for your direct deposits to be sent correctly. So just double check that, make sure it looks correct. Um, the correct information is listed there. Um, and th that second step then, um, is, is all set. The third step then is to set up the information that we talked about a little earlier um, in the salary notice configuration screen. So this looks very similar to, you know, the direct deposit or email notice um, configuration. You want to make sure that there's information in the from email. So who the email is gonna look like it came from. The subject, um, by default, it will state salary notice for the position description and then the compensation label. And then the body of the email um, can be changed, but by default, it, it will state attached to this message is your salary notice for, and again, that position description and the compensation label. Now, you do have the ability to send the salary notice to um, one email or all emails um, that are on file for an employee. So by checking this box here, it will send the email to primary email, the secondary email, and the other email. Where these um, three emails are located are on the employee record. So if you're not familiar with that, 
If you go to an employee's um, screen, you can see here the primary email, the secondary email, and the other email. So by default, if that box is checked, it will send the salary notice to all three emails on file. Now keep in mind, if the email address is the same in all three or more than one field, the email will not be sent multiple times. So it's only gonna send the salary notice once per email address. So if they're all the same, an employee, you can rest assured they're only gonna receive one salary notice. Now the system is case sensitive. So if you have an email address with a capital H in the primary email address and a lowercase h in the secondary email, the system will see that as two different emails and they will receive an email multiple times, um, even though it's you know probably the same email address. So just something to keep in mind um, when we're talking about you know sending of those notices. Okay, I'm gonna go back then to system configuration and we'll just finish up talking about um, the options within the salary notice configuration. So we talked about sending it to you know the various email addresses. Um, another option you have is the ability to exclude or include the employee number um, on the actual salary notice. So it's you know very district specific. If um, you know districts would like that employee number printed on the notice, you would obviously um, want to check that box or uncheck it based on you know district preference. And then again, you know, here's where you're going to define then, um, you know, the default salary notice. What will automatically be, be populated in that salary notice tab um, when they're um, selecting the form. Okay. All right. So we're going to go back to processing new contracts and back to that salary tab. I am just going to, once again, select my one employee. Um, and I'm going to now click on that email salary notice tab. When I click on that option, you can see a pop-up um, window appears and it allows me to um, define a date and a time I would like these notices sent. So if I click on the calendar, I have the ability then to um, select the date and also the time I would like these notices to be delivered. So I'm gonna choose just for my example, May 1st at 5 p.m. So these notices then are scheduled to be delivered June 1st at five o'clock. When I click schedule sending of salary notices, it tells you then how many notices were scheduled. I'm gonna X out of here and just like other jobs that you're familiar with um, seeing, if I go to utilities and the job scheduler, you can see here then there is a job that's scheduled for June 1st, um, the name will start out with new contract, and then the description will start out with email salary notice job. So you can kind of pick out, you know, those um, salary notice jobs in the job scheduler that way. Okay, so that is everything within the salary notice option um, within new contracts, generating them and emailing them. The other option is the ability to go to an employee's compensation record. And we can actually schedule or print the notices from that screen as well. So I'm gonna go back to 
my employee that I've been using in my example, I'm gonna to go to their dashboard. And I'm gonna to go to their compensation record. I'm gonna select the compensation that I'd like to print the notice to be printed for. And I'm gonna select salary notice. And you can see here, you have the same options that we saw um, within the new contract option. Um, we have the output file name, the statement date, the sort option, the school year. If I would like to include the district information on the notice, I have that option as well. I can choose the form that I want you know, to be used when the salary notice is generated. I can either select generate salary notices and that's gonna generate a PDF or I can email the salary notice and send it right to the employee. If I click the email salary notice option, again, I have this the same ability I did in um, the salary notice option with the new contract to actually schedule this, um, you know, for a, a specific date and time if I would like. I can just simply click schedule sending them notices that's going to immediately deliver the salary notice and send that to the employee. Okay, so I can show you here, it doesn't look any different than what we talked about before. Um, again, this is using the default um, salary notice form. And again, you can see I've selected to include the district information as well as include the employee number. Okay. All right. Um, I did want to point out before we move ahead um, in the new contract chapter, um, we do have a section called salary notices, and it's broken down by creating salary notices, customizing salary notices, and emailing salary notices. So these two that we've already talked about, creating salary notices and emailing salary notices, um, you know, if you have questions on any of those um, specific areas, you can click on those um, links within the chapter and it's gonna take, take you right to that specific section and allow you to you know, read and, and get clarification or more information about um, that those doing those uh, few specific things within the salary notice program. Okay, the last thing then um, is actually customizing salary notices. So there is a section in the chapter called, you know, as, as I pointed out, customizing salary notices. And I'm actually going to, going to turn um, the presentation over to Michelle Dravis, and she's going to take it from here and talk about um, everything you need to know about customizing your salary notices. So I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle. To create a custom salary notice, please refer to the custom, the creating custom forms chapter underneath the USPS useful procedures. In there, it includes general instructions on how to customize and print both direct deposit and salary notice forms. So if I scroll down here, the first thing we're going to see are the template um, files here. So you have the ability to download a template salary notice form, which is the current default form. And in order to customize it, you wanna download this and you wanna open it up. And the form is going to be in a Word document. So if I downloaded this and opened it up, this is what I'm going to see. So this is the default salary notice form. And so if I want to go in and make some changes in here, maybe I want to add a logo at the top and maybe add a few extra fields in here, I can do that. So first off, as I'm looking at this, um, there are some ways to um, know exactly where you need to 
enter the information. So um, you have kind of like a better placement of where you want to put a logo or extra fields. And so what you can do on this form is if I go up to file and then options down here and then display underneath this area here, always show these formatting marks on the screen. These are the like behind the scenes uh, formatting markups that can be displayed on your screen. Now they won't show when you actually print the form, but it just helps you in ensuring that you have the proper placement when you go in and start customizing. I'm going to select show all formatting marks and click on OK. And now you're going to see all of these extra formatting marks that now appear. Like I said, these won't appear or won't be printed on your form, but they will help you when you're wanting to go in and insert logos or extra fields. Now, another thing that you can do, um, maybe instead of this or in addition to this, is you can also choose to um, select the borders. Um, that's just another way in order to see the proper placement on the form. And the way to do that is to select the entire document, which you can use um, Control A to do that. And then underneath Home, there is going to be a borders option over here. And I can click on all borders. And you'll notice now that it's showing actual borders. So you can kind of see exactly where every line is. So the one thing you want to keep in mind with in borders, though, is that you need to turn these off before you save the form or else all of these borders will be printed when you generate those forms. So that's um, you know, two different ways in order to see things a little bit better on your form before you customize it. So I'm just gonna leave it with just the markups on here. And so what we're gonna do next is we are going to begin customizing this. So um, one thing to keep in mind is that you wanna make sure that any customization that's done is in between the list model objects field up here. And the and this is basically the end list tag. So everything you need to do needs to be in between these two. And so what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and um, add a few more fields um, on this. So what you're seeing here, everything that has like the uh, greater than less than signs in between, these are those merged fields that are in this document already. So if I compare this to what the actual form looks like when it's generated, I do have a screenshot of that, kind of a before and after. And so as you can see, here is my default form. And then when it generates, it's going to look like this. So you can see here, um, the date, here's my date, the employee ID number, here's the employee ID, um, here's the appointment type, fills it in with classified and so on. And so if I, like I said, wanted to come in and put a logo at the top of this form and also add maybe a few other fields um, to this, I can do that. So that's what I'm gonna show you next. So in my default form here, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple fields first. So in order to um, find those fields, we do ha have those listed in the um, custom forms chapter. So if I go back to that quick, down here, we have available salary notice fields at the bottom of this chapter. And so these are all of the available fields that are either already in the default form or can be added to customize it. And so if I go down here, there are some salary schedule fields down here that I would like to add. Let's say I wanna add this salary schedule ID, column and the step. So those are the three that I wanna um, actually insert into my form. So I can copy the information from here and paste it into that actual form. So I'm gonna select the salary schedule column first. 
I'm just going to go ahead and select this whole thing and copy it. And I'm going to go back into my Word document. And because I have these marks, markups here, it really helps me to know exactly where do I want to put this. And I actually want to move it and slide it right in here. And I'm going to tab over. And then what I'm going to do is label this. I want it to show salary schedule column. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more line here. So I've got a break there. And then in here, I'm going to go ahead and add that field that I just copied. Now, I just can't do a quick copy and paste. Instead, what I need to do is I need to go in and actually insert this in because it's a merged field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to insert. And I want to go over to the quick parts option. And then select field. And all of these fields here are called merged fields. So I want to find merged fields. There's merged field. And then I'm going to paste what I copied from the documentation. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And that actual field has been merged in. Now I can do the same for the next one. So I'm just going to hit my Enter key again, press Tab. And this one is going to be salary schedule step. And I'm going to go back to my documentation. I like that. Copy it. And paste it into my Word document again through the quick parts. So I'm going back up to quick parts, field, merge field. Paste, and it's been inserted. Now, another thing I could do as well is I could go in and um, copy one of these existing ones instead of going back into the documentation and just editing this and um, updating it. So I'm going to try that. My last one I want to put in is salary schedule ID. Oops. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to edit this. And I can right click and do edit field. And I'm going to copy this whole thing. Cancel out of there. And then go in here and do quick parts, field, merge field, paste that. But I need to change this up a little bit. And if I quick look at the documentation, what I want is salary schedule ID. So I'm just going to remove step and add ID. And OK. And so I have merged those three fields in here. Now, the next thing I want to do before I save this is I want to go in and insert a logo. So you want to make sure that the logo is inserted after this first field and is positioned with a in line with text type of formatting. And so I do have my image already saved. And so I want to take that image and insert it in here. So again, I'm very careful about where I'm going to place this. I want it to definitely be right after the first field. It has to be in between the first and last fields. So I just hit my Enter key. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert that image. So I'm going to go up to pictures. I'm already in insert pictures. And from this device, and go down to, and it's called Wildcat logo. And that's what it looks like. That's the one I want to insert in. So it puts it in here. And what I want to do is I just want to confirm that it's going to, it's in that um, in line with text type of format. 
So first off, I want to take this um, and ensure that that's um, the way it's formatted. And when I inserted this, you notice it took me directly to the picture format area of Word. And so basically I'm gonna look at position and make sure that inline with text is already selected. Usually that's the default option. And also that wrap text is in line with text as well. So those are usually default. So it should already be set up and ready to go. The last thing I wanna do is go in and center this. And so, and then if I wanted to create another space in between the logo and the date, I can do that as well. I could go up to date and I could just hit enter again and it will create another space there. So that's totally you know, up to the district. What you're gonna find yourself doing is probably playing around with this and making some adjustments. So I've got my logo. I've got my three new fields that I've, I've inserted. And this area down here concerns me a little bit as well. I think I wanna clean up all of these hard returns. Or basically, these are like um, hitting the enter key several times. And so I just wanna make sure that I clean these up as well. So I'm just gonna get rid of these. And basically I'm just gonna have endless basically right after my treasurer's signature. Now, like I said, you may, um, have, to, you may have to play around with this a little bit. Um, if it doesn't advance correctly, if you're doing generating multiple salary notices and it doesn't advance correctly, you can always um, go back in here and make changes to this. Um, for now, I'm, we're gonna save it like it is. Go ahead and do a file, save as. I'm gonna call it salary notice 2024 and click on save. It's still on the regular word format, which is what I want it to be in. And I'm re I've got one out there already, so I'm just replacing that one. Okay, and everything looks good here. So now I'm going to go in and um, insert this form into my report manager grid. So I'm in report manager, and the way to do that is go to create form, and then put in whatever the name of it is. Here's 24, and then my entity type, it's going to be new contract when it comes to the salary notice forms. Now I wanna select that form and it's my salary notice 2024 form. And then I would click on save. And when I do that, it displays it in my grid. So I've already added this one. So I'm just going to um, cancel out of that since I've already added it. And from here, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use this form to generate my salary notices. So I'm going to go up to processing and new contracts. And I'm going to go over to salary notices. And I'm going to go ahead and just select a couple so you can see the paging and how it advances to the next um, page when you're selecting more than one salary notice. So I'm going to select a couple employees here. And I'm going to include the district information on the salary notice. And I'm also going to make sure I change my form. I no longer want to use the default. I want to use the salary notice document that I created or form that I created. And I'm going to click on generate salary notice. And it says page one of two, so that's a good sign um, that um, I've got two notices here. Here's my first one to Josh. And here is the actual logo that was inserted. And if I feel like I you know, want an extra line here, I can always go back into that form in Word 
and create a, another um, enter uh, before this in order to create another line. Um, and here are the three fields that I added um, in my test data here. I didn't have any information on these three, but you can see that you know it will populate as long as there's information on there. Um, those will be displayed. And then if I scroll down here, here is my next one. And I can tell by looking at this, it isn't like pushed down or anything. It's basically advancing correctly. It's in the same spot as the prior form. And this is for Katrina. Same new fields that were added and anything else that I had. And as you can see, that's the last page. And um, then you can do the same thing uh, with emailing forms.